Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to this continuation of our little series where we are going back and redoing the campaign missions, but we're doing them with uh, kind of the latest technology. We're up to version 1.7 right now. We're running the public beta version with the dynamic warehouses and all that cool stuff. So we're going to do this time the Civil War, mission four. We're going to skip the cutscene and get right to it. And as you know, I, uh, I hate inheriting other people's messes, so I decided to just clean this one up. So we're going to do a whole bunch of deleting here, and I'm going to uh, fast forward through this till we get done. I just delete everything that's out there. Okay, that didn't take long. So our two first tasks are to grow Louisville to 60,000. It's already over 50 and it has a museum. So that's not terribly hard, but we got to move because it's not getting enough, uh, anything really in there. Now, this first move here is critical. I'm going to put in two of our big super stations, our, our uh, large stations with the controlling signals. And I'm putting them in to reserve the space because you know I'm going to buy that chemical factory. You, I'm sure you knew that. And you know I'm going to put a weapons industry in here um, as well. But by putting those two stations in first, we didn't have to worry about where those factories were located. Once you own the factory, it gets set into a position and you can't, and you have to work around it. See, see how that little red thing there says we couldn't build down there? So um, it's very important that you figure out what kind of stations you want first and then do your buying in a situation like this. So we're also going to run the super warehouses and and have take advantage of the fact that they can be outside of Louisville. So now we've just got a whole bunch of potential for bringing stuff in and out of Louisville. We've got, um, you know, the, the two large uh, stations that uh, regular stations in there. We've got the warehouse. We're actually going to have another warehouse. But what I'm setting up here now is the stuff that's going to come in from kind of the south and also the ability to uh, take our weapons and immediately put them into a warehouse so that we're, we, we can make um, those weapons and keep that production going and have a place to put them. And we're also getting the, um, there's a bunch of stuff you need for the weapons. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But right here, what I'm doing is figuring out what cities are going to bring Louisville the goods it needs to grow. So we can get meat over there in St. Louis. That's the first thing we were looking for. And on top of that, as a bonus, we can get cloth from over there. So that's beautiful. St. Louis is an obvious place for us to hook up. So we're going to run a city-to-city -city line between Louisville and St. Louis. And as I said, we'll get meat and cloth, and we'll make sure that that meat and cloth have enough supplies so that they can keep producing and sending meat and cloth to Louisville. So we'll double track it, do our standard uh, uh, double track line. Uh, we've got the point the point to point type connection out here in St. Louis because we're treating it almost like a rapid expansion kind of an approach using the, as little money as, as we can get away with because we spent three said we would spent nine hundred thousand dollars just on those three um, the two stations in the warehouse we put in so far but we started with five million after all of our, our deleting we ended up with over six and a half million so we've got plenty of money to work with to build a really nice um, infrastructure here really fast that'll promote growth for Louisville and make us a lot of money. So we're setting up our line now with four trains running back and forth between Louisville and St. Louis. And uh, now we're gonna say, okay, where can we get beer? Well, Cleveland, Cleveland's making beer. So we're gonna run a direct line from Cleveland right into Louisville, into one of our super stations down there double track it and then we'll have a, a line running beer into Cleveland and of course we'll make sure that that beer industry in Cleveland has what it needs uh, wheat so that it can keep producing and keep sending beer to Louisville.
and I goofed up that first line I ran up to Cleveland. I, I, I grabbed the wrong uh, platform there out of that, out of that super station, and uh, now I'm cleaning that up. So I just deleted that one line, and we'll rerun it uh, correctly. So we're using side-by-side -side, uh, platforms in Louisville to, to, to this line. Now I am going to try to condense this one uh, and make it into one video. It, it, there's a lot of good stuff in this one, but I'll make sure you see all the good stuff. But but uh, let's fast forward a bit. We're gonna we're gonna make sure we have uh, lumber coming down from Indianapolis because there's a lumber factory there, and we need lumber for our tools. And for our tools, we need chemicals, and we need ore, and we need lumber. And for the chemicals, we need coal. So we need coal and lumber and chemical and um, ore coming into our city and coal and we need logs going to Louisville or to uh, Indianapolis to make sure that that lumber keeps producing lumber into uh, Louisville so we'll set up a direct line with Indianapolis and that'll bring the lumber into Louisville that we need for our uh, demand satisfaction and for our um, weapons factory and then we'll make sure that we add lumber to that uh, into Indianapolis so that uh, it gets constant production of lumber and we don't have any gaps in our in our supply of lumber into Louisville. So let's move ahead just a little bit. Now, when it comes to the ore, we're going to buy our that ore. We're going to buy the coal, uh, Jackson Pit, and uh, we're actually even going to buy the lumber up here in uh, Martin Forest. And the first two, especially the lumber, not nice lumber was just lumber's cheap. It's easy to buy the logging camp, but um, the coal and the the um, iron ore bought those for the main part. Well, one, we can make money on them, of course, but the main reason was so that if necessary, we can control the uh, level of those um, mines and make sure that we've got enough coming in to keep our weapon production up because that's going to be a big deal in this one, of course, is the, our ability to create weapons. So we're just going to use kind of a technique I've been using a lot. You've seen it on a lot of my recent videos where when you have a string of things, you've got to run into a place like into this warehouse. You just kind of piggyback them on. You go out to one, you set it up, and then you then somewhere short of uh, um, that itself, you run up to the next one. You'll see what I mean. But we'll just double track back from the ore and then after the ore is done, we will hook in the coal and we'll hook in the um, logs. They'll just kind of piggyback on each other and it'll, it'll end up, the effect will make one continuous line, but you're actually building three lines here, ore and coal and logs. And put, each time we build a new one on, we'll check the uh, supply towers to make sure they're cool. And here I'm actually putting a supply tower anticipation of putting that uh, milk, um, into the system actually turned out I didn't put the milk in until quite a bit later but it, no matter it's all set and, and 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 we can use the tower anyway so now we're going to run our ore into uh, into um, the warehouse and I forgot that you start with a bunch of research I love this initial research you get the dragon you get you get uh, more reliable uh, trains you get uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just awesome. You get uh, it's it's just tr tremendous to start out with this research. They really make this one easy on us because there's already a museum in in Louisville, even though it's not big enough to qualify for one. And there and uh, we get all this research as a head start, and you get five million dollars. I mean, come on, <laughs> yeah, how easy could it be? So. Um, doesn't mean it's a super easy mission, but man, they, they do get, they do set you up. So we're going to move everybody over to the Dragon and uh, run that for a while till we have something better. And like I said, we'll run those three lines in. So let's move ahead a little bit more.
Now I mentioned earlier that we want to make sure we have logs coming into Indianapolis. So what I'm going to do here is actually run a line from Chicago because it'll be a profitable line, give us a city to city line and run that into um, a new station in Indianapolis and then use that new station to hook uh, a log line into this line right here. And really did it because if the, the, the line's going to go up like this and then turn west to go out and get the logs. Since I had to build all that anyway, I decided to go ahead and hook up Chicago. So, um, and it, it, can, it can bring some meat down to uh, Indianapolis, which you can see there by that red uh, um, light on the city is, is actually dwindling. It's actually so poorly supplied right now, it's losing ground. So running some meat in there would be a good thing. Uh, it, it's not a big deal, but we, we you know, we don't, uh, there's no reason for it to dwindle if it doesn't have to. So we'll run the line to Chicago, get some meat going down there to help Indianapolis uh, help those people, keep those people from starving, I guess. And uh, then we'll set up our log line. Uh, you can see it there to the left of the screen. It's uh, to the west of Chicago. We'll hook that into that line we just built. Here we go. And then run logs down to uh, Indy. Now that's very important. We couldn't, we could have done without the Chicago line at this point, but the line to Indy is very important because we want to run those logs um, in there and keep that lumber supply steady going over to um, our weapons factory in Louisville. Okay, so we set the logs up. Now let's make sure that our meat business over in uh, St. Louis is has the uh, cattle it needs and that textile business has the cotton it needs. So we're going to use the same technique. We're going to go past that cotton and pick up Columbia and run a line over here and then piggyback off that line to run cotton into St. Louis and piggyback off the line again to run um me or uh, sorry cattle into st louis and that way we have supplies i decided here because of the load to run that city to city line actually into this um, existing platform it's only at 29 percent so we're going to have the two city to city lines running into that one station and then we'll set it up so that the cotton and the um, cattle are running into the new station we just put down in st louis and uh, we'll keep uh, St. Louis pretty well supplied for minimal investment. But the main thing is, of course, all these cities are serving Louisville. So uh, the main thing, of course, is to get the cattle there so the meat uh, supply to Louisville is constant and get um, cotton in there so that the textiles can go constantly to Louisville and keep uh, keep that demand satisfaction up as we continue to try to grow Louisville. And keep in mind, we're just in our first month. <laughs> We've just started. So, um, we, and we've already produced a weapon, so that's great. And now we just gotta finish off that task of growing Louisville. So here comes our cotton. So let's fast forward. Well, I would do, uh, I guess one thing is worth showing. We, um, as I'm running the uh, cotton line, decided to, you know, put the cotton and the cattle over there on that other station. So we're going to first tap, um, tap into the line we already created going over to Columbia. And then we're going to, um, I started to set the line and realized, uh, no, no, I want to build it out. So I, we're going to run a little feeder over here that goes over to the other station and hook that up. And now that line is serving, really serving both stations. And we can run our um, cotton into that uh, new station very easily and balance out the load in both of those stations. 
This is the kind of thing you have to do when you're not using those super stations, as I call them, the ones with the uh, automated uh, uh, the con uh, control signals. Uh, you, um, you know, you have to think about the, your load as you go into each one. But if you do, as long as you do, as long as you think about it and, and uh, think ahead and, and balance it out, they, they work great. So now here's the um, cattle. We'll run that down and hook it up into the same line and run it in so that it can it can uh, uh, go up to that uh, new station. The station is a little further to the north. Mm -hmm. And that, okay, so now once this is done, we'll have St. Louis in good shape, good enough for what we're trying to get done, which is, you know, get that uh, meat and uh, textiles over to Louisville. And it's worth noting right here, I, I uh, give myself a pat on the back. I noticed that that uh, signal that was running into the station, the, that upper station, was would potentially allow a train to go in there and stop and block traffic uh, at that intersection. So you want to keep your intersections clear. And I've said this in recent, recent videos quite a bit. Some, one of the keys to making sure you don't get those log jams and gridlock situations is not putting in more signals. It's taking signals out to make sure that the area where uh, multiple lines are merging is clear so that there has to be a clear path all the way through for trains to move so that you don't get trains stuck across lines so that they block other lines. So um, that was an example of that. Now we're going to go ahead and put another one of our little super warehouses over on the other, on the north, to the north of the Ohio River. And in this map, I'll give them credit, they, they did put Louisville on the correct side of the Ohio River. Um, uh, as one of you pointed out uh, on the, the map I use all the time for the examples, they actually have Louisville north of the Ohio River, which is uh, not exactly right. But um, here it's, it's correct. So what we're going to do is run our corn and um, our sugar and uh, some fruit and some other things into that northern warehouse that's uh, on the other side of the river. And uh, it'll be magically moved over to Louisville o o across land. I guess there'll be a ferry over there or something that isn't represented in the game, but there is a land route that, that takes that, those goods into the city. So now, similar to what we did with Indy and with uh, St. Louis, we're going to make sure that Cleveland gets wheat so that we have a constant supply or a steady supply of beer going down to Louisville. And then we'll turn around, of course, and flip that uh, uh, wheat to make sure that it can get to our warehouse so that uh, Louisville has wheat as well. So there's our setup for uh, wheat to Cleveland. Now here we go, we're going to use another small station. And uh, I've said this before, but I'll explain it again. Why two small instead of one regular size station? Two small costs a grand total of 80,000. One regular station costs $100,000. That's pretty simple math to me. And remember, I don't put maintenance on these buildings when I'm doing these uh, scenarios. So uh, I'm not worried about having additional maintenance costs or anything like that. It's cheaper to put it in. It's also easier because I don't have to worry about setting up the lines. You just go, <laughs> go, <laughs> that's all you do. And here we're gonna set up the key to making that work is we're going to run a line over here and hook it up with our main trunk line coming down from Cleveland and build an intersection here and run it back to the warehouse. And I actually, I, I know I, at, once, at first I was thinking about running that as one of those flat connections, but I'm glad they left it as a bridge because that way there's zero tie-ups between those two lines. Those lines can just cross over each other or under each other without any problems and we're good to go. So now we're gonna run wheat down to the warehouse. And I feel like I'm talking kind of fast, and I think it's because I'm actually playing very fast. This 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 um, uh, scenario flies by, and of course I stay on fast forward most of the time, so it really flies. But uh, this particular one just moves. You got to keep you got to keep moving. If you're playing it well, each new task pops up pretty quickly. So so it, it's a, it's a great scenario if you like kind of that uh, that uh, if you don't like it to drag, uh, this is this is one for you. 
So now we're going to set up corn to go into that warehouse, which will feed uh, Louisville. So now we'll go out and grab some um, fruit and get that uh, coming into Louisville as well. And we'll run it into the warehouse. And this one, I think I got lost for a second here. I came down and, and yeah, I did. I put it on this line, which is fine. I just connected it into the, an existing trunk line. The thing is, though, that's the trunk line that actually is going into the city of Louisville. I uh, uh, kind of got my uh, directions messed up a little bit there, if you will. So. Um, I'm looking at this and thinking I'm all done. Turns out I'm not. So as I set the line, I realize, wait a minute, that's not where I'm trying to go. So I've messed up here. But easy fix, easy fix. All we have to do is now come off of that uh, trunk line and go over to the warehouse. Not a problem. And it's not an express line. It's a city-to-city -city line hauling freight. Some passengers are mail, but it's basically, I think of it as a freight line. So we're just going to run a, a little line off of our warehouse, out this end, go north of the Ohio, and come down here and hook up with, um, with that trunk line going from St. Louis to Louisville. And that way our fruit can come down, cross over, go back up to the warehouse, all, all is well. And now we've got a fruit line going into our warehouse and giving us uh, more goods. And we finally spent our six and a half million dollars. So now we're going to open up some bonds. And, and with all that stuff we have, we can open some nice big bonds and have a lot more money to, to deal with. So this is great. So we got a couple more million dollars to blow through. So we'll give it an extra supply tower and we'll run fruit into our warehouse. So you can see here that we're still blocked from building in the south, but we know we want to run those weapons down there to the south. We know we want to start shipping them, and we want to clear space in our warehouse as they accumulate. So we're going to set up a warehouse down here as close to that uh, southern uh, border as we can get. And I thought I'd pick up, uh, take advantage of the warehouse capability and at least pick up some logs here. So we're going to run a line here. And there, uh, the idea there is you could take logs back. But what we're going to do is ship our weapons out to this warehouse and get them prepped up and ready to go, to go down to the south. A considerable size. This has made the city a strategically important point in the war. As goods so now our Louisville has hit its task. It's at, it, at, at 60,000. The president is satisfied. We've and we now we have a new troops. new task, which to is to, and for that, not timely enough, to ship 12 supplies. weapons. Your task now is to expand the rail network into the south as quickly as possible. Incorporate the existing lines into it. Tennessee now, is what strategically he, crucial for the further course of the war. Sorry, the I'm just going to talk over it. What he's telling us is, is Deliver weapons somewhat so as quickly misleading. As you can. Our task is to ship 12 weapons, period. He's going to tell us all about Memphis and, and uh, Nashville and incorporating lines and all this stuff, but our task is to ship 12 weapons. Well, as we know from our other play, you get credit for shipping a, weapon, uh, shipping a product, whatever it is, any good, if you move it to a warehouse. Now, you don't get credit for just having it pop into that warehouse next to the city, but that's why this other warehouse is here. We're going to ship the uh, weapons. And let's see, watch this and see if you spot my mistake. I, I do make a terrible mistake here. I just uh, misread this thing. I can't believe I did it. I did it right on this end. I don't want the 
want the weapons to get shipped from, from that second warehouse back to Louisville. Because what will happen is if you had it set up and you had it running, say, weapons from the two warehouses, which is what we're trying to do. If you run the, if you load weapons in Louisville and run them over to the other warehouse, it'll just turn around and take the weapons right back to Louisville if you don't tell it not to take them. So it's very important that you tell, tell uh, when you've got a warehouse to warehouse setup, you've got to be very aware of where do I want these goods to go and where do I not want them to go. So here, we're just making sure that the uh, production in our mines matches what we need in the city. We want it to be equal to, it could be slightly greater, but we really want it ideally exactly equal to the demand in the city. So we've upgraded our weapons and chemicals to two, so we want to make sure that that we've got the right amount of uh, other products coming in there to support it, that. And we do right now. Now we can only hope that the flames of war do not blaze up into the north. And we so I'm trying to figure it. out why am I not shipping any weapons? And I'm looking at this and saying, well, I've got it turned on Even at that end. Everything should be good. War, we so it finally dawns on me I need to look at the actual line and line setup itself. Together with the southern states and, and then I see my mistake. Again. I had Our actually it. told it to that, ship uh, the coal and ore. Jonathan well, no, the coal. The That's hard to read. And not the Don't weapons. So as soon as I flipped it around the way it should be to the weapons, now I can territory. load weapons here in Louisville and the take them to the warehouse at the other place. Now remember, I've got three that trains queued up here to run full. Now fortunately, they all came out, that, they happens. pop out of that you first uh, to platform to start with. Direction. Later on, we'll see what, what else goes on. So I've got to fix each one of these individually because we don't have the ability to fix a, quote, line. We can only fix each of the trains. Each train is a line, really, the way the game plays. So now we've got them all set to run weapons. So we're, we've already got 16 on the way Knoxville over there. Jackson There's some more here. Reached. So we'll quick, we quickly close out that task. And now it gives us explicit directions to go 12 weapons to Knoxville, 12 weapons to Jackson. Well, Jackson is way down to the south here, south of Memphis, way down here, Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, so what we're going to do here is clean up this mess around Memphis and, and Knoxville, or Nashville, rather, excuse me, because I, again, don't like to inherit other people's messes. So we're just going to get all this out of the way and take the money for it, which is nice. And we'll clean up all this track and get all this out of, out of the way. And then we're going to run a line all the way down to Jackson. So let's uh, fast forward just a little bit to uh, when that line gets set up. So now we have that line set, so you can guess what we're going to do. We're going to go up here to the warehouse and run a line down to Jackson. And from the warehouse, we're going to say run full out, there was no time with lose. weapons. Don't that, take the logs, just take the weapons and go to and so Jackson. And of course, we don't right care if anything comes back. And we're going to run two trains full. That'll now give us 16. That'll fulfill the task. We could have done two sixes or an eight and a four or whatever. But two trains will fill it up. We're, we're making good weapons at this point. So now what we want to do is, once we get those two going, we can go ahead and set up our line to Knoxville. I did Jackson first uh, because it's the longest uh, route. So I wanted to get it going first, make sure I had those two going. And then I knew I could uh, grab uh, two more train loads to go to Knoxville and knock off both of the tasks. So we're going, and here, a little departure for me, I typically go around mountains when I can, but we've got lots of money now. Our money is just doing great. Our income is very solid, and we're just going to go ahead and bite the bullet and build us a nice big tunnel and keep that line nice and flat and fast and um, run our uh, weapons over to Knoxville. And that tunnel uh, will speed the process up because to go around those mountains, the, the line will probably would have been, I'm going to guess, three times as long as it ended up being. So uh, now we can run a couple of trains full from that warehouse weapons over to Knoxville and knock off that task. So let's fast forward a little bit more.
Now we had another task in addition to the weapons was to haul 2,000 passengers. Well, our task was to haul 2,000 passengers. It didn't really matter where, even though it told us to take them to the south. And with our infrastructure, that was no problem. Now, what I'm doing here is double checking because there's a hint on there. It's very important. It tells you that recruiting stations are being set up in St. Louis, Des Moines, and Chicago. And you want to make sure, this is a very important thing, you want to make sure that you have lines in your network running to those three cities that go ultimately to Louisville. So we've got it set up so a Des Moines passenger can go from Des Moines to St. Louis, then St. Louis to Louisville. Of course, St. Louis can go directly to Louisville. And then we've got Chicago can go to Indianapolis, get a train in Indianapolis and go to Louisville. So we've got the ability in our network to move from all three of those recruiting stations to the ultimate recruiting station in Louisville. And what happens now is we get a load of passengers, we get good loads of passengers going to Atlanta. That'll come up later. But right now you see, here's where you pay for it, having that uh, load full kind of deal uh, on your, uh, on your uh, super station here, your super warehouse, because you can't tell it which lane you want. And it took up three of our lanes. So I decided to kill one of the trains, kept two of them, and uh, with the hope that that won't mess things up too much. So that's a big disadvantage of the, of the new functionality. If you can't use a lane, it's very hard to run full out of it. Now, we, I could have run these as, as uh, just back and forth, too. That would have worked just fine. And I think if I was going to do it again, particularly if I used the, the uh, warehouse with the special signals, I would, I would not run it full. I'd just tell it to run back and forth until it was done. Uh, so now we've gotten, you see Jacksonville has, has hit, and our Knoxville ones have, have, have loaded up and they're on their way as those trains came back. And, and that was another disadvantage, having all three of those trains getting loaded, it was actually slowing down the process because they were taking up, not only taking up three platforms, but the loads were being distributed amongst them and instead of letting a train go ahead and, and um, take off. So that actually slowed us down in another way too because the two other trains were slowing down the first one that should have already taken off with a full load. So it slowed it down a little bit, but no big deal. So now we've got our trains going off to Knoxville and we'll get that task finished off and let's see what comes up after this. Here we go, there's, there's the first train is hit. So there's eight and we know the the second train is on its way, in Knoxville and, Jackson. and there we go. Perhaps now it, now it's finished. The of the war in our favor. And now we see our, our last set of tasks. To we've got to no help Atlanta to out. So what we've got to do is ship a lot of people to down to Atlanta for reconstruction to and help Atlanta grow. So we've got to haul a whole mess of, of people, 3,000 from uh, Louisville to um, Atlanta. But that's the where that uh, having all those lines set up in advance to get you good traffic really helps you out. So and then the for our building, here's what we're going to do. Maybe Rare we'll thing for me, but we're going to keep to so, we'll the infrastructure the general has already set up because it's not awful. We'll and it has a lot of connections that we can use. Then the other thing we're going to do is expand that station in Atlanta, and we're going to expand it all the way out to a super station with the signaling control. And I had to get rid of all that track in order to do that. And one reason I actually did this was just so you could see that you can actually update or up, update your station, you know, upgrade it to, to the uh, controlling signals. However, you got to get rid of all the track and clean out space because it is huge, and it has its very – it's already fixed uh, – uh, junction there and you have to be able to accommodate that size. So we just cleaned out some space for it and um, expanded it. Now we've got a nice uh, super station there in Atlanta. We can run stuff in from the south here to help it grow. We can run passengers in from the north to meet our uh, passenger shipment uh, um, target and life is good. So we're going to run a line back from Atlanta up to that tunnel that we that we paid a fortune for up there near Knoxville and be able to take advantage of that now to um, get good fast uh, movement of, of passengers and mail from Louisville to Atlanta. So we'll set up this line, it'll hook in there uh, right near Knoxville, it'll go through that tunnel and then it'll veer off and go up to uh, Louisville as a passenger and mail line.
Now there, I'll pat myself on the back. I'm getting better about it. When I made that merge, there was that signal down there past it, right in front of the Louisville station. I got rid of that signal so we don't have trains coming down and stopping uh, right there and blocking the traffic that's trying to come in from the new merge. So again, the lesson there is when you create new merges, make sure that you clear out the signals so that you don't have these potential gridlocks where trains are crossing the, uh, the tracks that's merging and uh, uh, causing a, a block there where, where everybody gets stopped. You could get total gridlock if, if it's a bad enough situation. So um, that's, that's the thing I'm really trying to work on right now is getting better at recognizing that in advance and not waiting until I have a gridlock to try to fix it. So, um, and again, the moral is uh, the, the solution is often less signals, not more signals. I think our, everybody's first inclination is to throw more signals in there and try to get the trains to move up. But what you really want to do is keep the area where the uh, merge is happening, you want to keep that clear of signals so that uh, you've got a nice clean space for everybody to make their decision as to when they go through there. All right, so at this point, uh, the uh, passenger stuff is good. We're going to set up uh, set up our line and run trains between uh, Louisville and um, Atlanta. We'll, we'll run uh, uh, passenger mail only. Uh, five coming out of Atlanta and then five more, or five coming out of Louisville and then five more going back toward Atlanta. So we'll have 10 total trains. Uh, running back and forth or running that Rogers American, which is an express train, which is perfect for this. Uh, uh, it'll get us more traffic. And of course, we've done our due diligence and we've got all those hookups with those cities. So uh, we've got uh, good, uh, you know, kind of that extra traffic uh, queued up in Louisville, ready to go to Atlanta. So we're going to get, uh, um, we're going to be able to handle that 3,000 passengers. It seems like a lot of passengers, but we'll be able to handle it pretty easily. So now we're getting into growth mode for Atlanta. So what we're going to do is keep the general's um, basic infrastructure with those changes we made right around the Atlanta station. And we're going to run lines in. We're going to run freight lines into um, Jacksonville down there. They have beer and meat. Make sure that they have cattle coming into Jackson. Jacksonville, so that Jacksonville can send meat up to Atlanta. And here we're making sure that there's wheat going down to Jacksonville so that, again, that beer can go up to Atlanta. Now, it turns out there's actually a beer up in uh, Atlanta as well, and we'll take care of that and, and make sure it has uh, wheat. Uh, in fact, that's what we're doing right here is make it, well, sorry, right here is the uh, line we're running up to, um, we're going to run four trains out of Jacksonville up to Atlanta. And then we'll set up the wheat so that it goes uh, directly up to Atlanta so that Atlanta gets the wheat it needs for its brewery and just for consumption in general. So at this Granted, point... I'm profiting from the war, but that's the way the Treasury bill business is. Our side is winning thanks to this, and there's also a little something in it for me. So um, at this point, we're really in the kind of that mode, similar to the way we started the mission, similar to the way we played Toledo in the last mission, we're just going to pump stuff into Atlanta. Uh, we're going to uh, run the logs in, which is what we're doing right now. We right, we're ran the wheat. We're going to throw in uh, uh, veggies and, and fruit and milk and all that stuff and have it queued up and ready to go in there as soon as Atlanta needs it. And here a key move, we're going to uh, buy that um, worthless uh, chemical plant in Augusta that can't be uh, supplied, replace it with a uh, textile industry and run cotton from that nearby cotton uh, plantation over there and now we can build, we can create textiles in Augusta, have a profitable business there, and to have those textiles go back to Atlanta on, on a city-to-city -city line between Augusta and Atlanta. And now we've, we've added yet another thing into Atlanta's demand satisfaction, the textiles. And we'll just keep doing that. We'll just keep adding things and, and, and um, uh, continuing to run that until Atlanta grows to its 50,000. 
we're already well set up to run all those passengers because we've done the due diligence, as I said before. We've got it all set up properly. So uh, now it's just a matter of waiting for it all to finish. So I'm going to stop right here and fast forward to the end because I really don't do anything else that matters at this point. I, if a bonus pops up, I'll grab it. I do throw in some fruit. To, you know, as I said, I got fruit. I got, I'll end up doing milk and other things to go to Atlanta. I just keep looking at Atlanta. What does Atlanta need next and make sure it's queued up and ready to go? And other than that, it's just watching it to the end. So let's uh, fast forward and see how we did. So here we see we're just about done. We've got the passengers have all been moved. We're just uh, got a few need a few more people in Atlanta. We're good to go. So we thought might as well we're going to repay our bonds, be debt free when we finish, and we're just waiting for those last few people to move into Atlanta so we can get Atlanta our victory is screen. Growing again, and the there we go. In the city can be catered for too. Now we've got Atlanta grown. We've, we've completed the mission. Let's see how we did. We'll skip the cutscene, although it's a pretty good one. So we've got a president rating, perfect score, 20 out of 20, and we completed it in two years and one month. So that's pretty good. So I'm very happy with the play, enjoyed playing this mission. I really like this one, and I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.